Hi everybody, it is Tuesday and I am back in my kitchen cooking. Today I'm going to be making a one pan meal. Delicious. Uh, before I get started though, you might notice that my kitchen, well maybe you don't notice because it's kind of similar to my other kitchen, but this is my southern digs, my southern location now. So if I can't find a utensil, <laughs> Where it takes me a little bit longer, you'll understand why. I'm trying to get acclimated here with all of my tools. In fact, I didn't even bring an apron with me this time. Next time. Okay, good. Well, but as I was saying, today we are going to be making a wonderful one pan dish. Very easy, makes meal prep really easy. You can make up this dish and um, throw it into the oven, have it ready for dinner. In fact, uh, we, I made this last night, just kind of testing out and uh, kind of testing, uh, test kitcheningit, <laughs> if you will, uh, just to see how things would go. And let me just show you what the finished dish looks like. Because I was just heating it up a bit here. And here we have our finished dish. So, ooh, smells delicious. So we're gonna have a lot of this in the household, so it's a good thing that it tastes delicious. I'm gonna plop this back in. All right, so let's get started. So one of the things you need for a one pan dish is your pan, right? So I have a casserole dish here, nine by 13, Pyrex casserole dish. I love using the, the glass Pyrex for this. I found that I didn't even need to line the, the casserole dish. I just used it straight as is. And I pulled out my cabbage, which is the main ingredient in this dish, along with half of a butternut squash. I used the other half last night, and I'll show you how I slice that up. We'll start with the cabbage, but two other ingredients that we'll be using is a nice, fresh, crisp apple and half of a red onion. So to begin with, what I want to do is I want to line the bottom of my plate with cabbage slices. So I'm going to take my cabbage and I, I'm going to slice it as thinly as possible, maybe about a quarter inch. The reason being that when this bakes, I want it to get nice and soft and it almost comes out like a, a noodle in that case. So I'm going to try and do about, I'm going to say about eight slices. I want to do about a double layer of cabbage along the bottom. And I'm not even going to undo it. I'm just going to sit them and overlap them a little bit in the dish, like so. By the way, I did take off some of the outer leaves of the cabbage before I began. I'm going to take out the, off this outer one too, just because it has some blemishes on it. It's probably just fine, but it just didn't look as nice. So I might be going a little bit too thin on these slices since that one didn't go all the way through. These knives aren't quite as sharp as my others, so having struggling a little bit with it. I'm also getting to the point where I'm going through the stem and that can be a little bit more challenging as well. All right. So, you know, I figure you, you probably have about two cups of cabbage by the time you're done. I'm going to cut one more slice because I found that this dish has a lot of juices to it and the cabbage really gets a nice flavor as it absorbs all those juices. Well, I'm gonna go heavy on the. Now I'm getting to the middle where I get the center of my cabbage here. So I might want to just break that up a little bit. And I'm gonna discard that 
core that's right there. All right, so you can see how much I have layered in here now. Perfect. So that was about half of a large cabbage that I used. Next thing I want to do is I want to prepare the butternut. What I didn't mention is this dish um, uses a mustard sauce. So it's a honey mustard glaze basically that goes over the chicken that gives it a wonderful, wonderful flavor. So I did end up peeling this squash earlier and I have made a video on doing that. So I'm gonna post that later on. So keep an eye out for that if you wanna see. But basically I just used a regular peeler and peeled the outside of the squash until the sides are more orange than white. It's like a creamy white, a butternut squash. And then in order to make these ribbons, what I wanna do is just peel, using the peeler to continue to use the peeling. And what you get are these strips, these noodle-like strips that are great in the dish. And I like them in this thickness because they tend to cook up nice and tender. If it's thicker, they don't cook as well and it's kind of an uneven cooking time, but you can. You can use um, a mandolin. You can use a knife to cut. Uh, I've done this dish before where the squash is more like a quarter inch thick. Here, this is, you know, a millimeter maybe. Very small, very thin. Now, if you don't have time to do this, there's another way you can do it. And that is to use your food processor. And I just happen to have my food processor here. So I thought maybe we'd try and do a little comparison to see how one compares to the other. So I'm just going to smooth this down a little bit. Just shave it down a little bit more. Okay. So. Let me just move this, my cutting board out of the way here and let me grab my Cuisinart, my food processor. All plugged in. All right. And I have in here my slicing blade. Can you see right here? Which is very thin. So I thought I would try that. See how we do. Just grab my cutting board. Um, it may be that my squash is too thick to fit into the channel here. So I'm going to cut it down like so. And it does fit in, that's great. All right, well, let's give it a try. All right. Let's see how thick these actually are. Okay, so not bad. You can see they're a little bit thicker than what we have here with the, the noodle side that we shaved. Yet. But let me finish since this is nice and quick. Uh, let's see if this will fit in. Yes, it, whoops, it would help if I put the blade in. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, let's try that again. All right, there we go. All right. Boom, done. Let me just remove my blade and bring my casserole dish back. All right, so remember I had layered in my cabbage very nicely. Now I have my, my um, squash pieces that I'm just going to layer over again on top of that cabbage. And since these are nice and thin, 
They should cook up nice and tender. The cabbage gets nice and soft and is noodle-like as well. These aren't quite noodle shapes. Not like if you're doing the, sh the shredding here. So I'm gonna put the shredded noodles over on this side. And I think we're going to find that we're going to have a nice layer overlapping the pieces, but it's going to cover that cabbage very nicely. It's a thicker piece, I think we'll leave it. We still have a lot more left to go in here. And what's nice about doing this this way too is the juices, again, will filter through and flavor everything. And if you are doing this for company and you want it to look really nice and neat and beautiful, you can certainly overlap the pieces in a very organized manner. I'm just putting things in pretty, pretty randomly here. But what I am doing is separating the slices as I go along. All right just so that it's evenly distributed. Perfect. Okay, last one. Very good. All right, let me just remove my processor. All right, we now have two layers. Wonderful. The next layer we're going to do is an apple. Now, normally what I would do is I would use a core to core the middle of this apple. I don't have a core here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut down, cut my apple in half, and I'm going to get creative. I actually have a melon baller here, and I'm going to use that to scoop out the seeds in the middle, just like so. Nice and neat. There you go, quick and easy. And I'm just going to slice out the top and the bottom, that stem and the base as well. So that's not going to be included in the dish. Perfect. All right, so now I have my apple and I'm just going to slice it very thinly. Now again, we could use that food processor and I might just be tempted to try doing that. Let's try it. Just plug this in again. Okay. Grab my blade, that thin blade. Now again, you could do it by hand the way I started to, as you can see, like so. But this thing, Boom, 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 it'll be done. It's a little bit too big to fit into my processor. There we go, that's better. Look at that, instant slices. All right, so once again, we're gonna do just like we did the butternut squash. And what's nice about this dish, both the butternut squash and the apples add a wonderful sweetness to the dish. So we don't have to add a lot in the glaze that we're going to put on top. Normally when you have a honey mustard glaze, you've got a you know, a fair amount of honey in there, especially if it's a commercial, commercially made honey mustard. A lot of times the commercially made honey mustards don't even have honey in it. It's high fructose corn syrup. You gotta be careful when you're purchasing yours to, to look and see if you are. I tend just to avoid buying honey mustard, although I do love the flavor. 
but I avoid it because um, I can just add my own flavorings to my mustard if I want to. And then I have control over how much is in there. And I'm usually adding a lot less than what a manufacturer will because they're hiding the fact that they're using other ingredients that you may not really want in there. <laughs> All right, so I'm almost done layering my apple. And because these are so nice and thin, they will also cook down. Excellent. All right. Got some little ends there. We'll just put them at the bottom there. Okay. Very good. And here is the apple layer. Yum. It's cooking up good. And last but not least, we are going to layer on our onion. So I have a red onion here. Half an onion is what we'll be using. Just gonna peel off that paper on the outside. All right. I love this red onion because it adds such a pretty color to the dish. If you don't have a red onion, you can use a yellow onion or a white onion. If you'd like a sweeter dish, you could use a sweet onion. Either way. So I'm just slicing this down as thinly as I can. It's probably about an eighth of an inch. Maybe some quarter, quarter of an inch pieces here. But I want to keep it again thin. I guess you could do this in the food processor as well. I'm going to just kind of separate the rings a little bit for this one. Okay, bring it closer to me so we can see what's going on and how's that. Yeah, there we go. Fun. So hopefully you're enjoying so far. Yes, oh, I love that, Paula. That's such a great idea. Comment was that it's a great way to keep the pectin in the the nutrients in the core just to do it the way we did so that you're not taking too much of that core out all at once, right? Absolutely. Wonderful. So glad to see you. Okay, so I now have my red onion on top. So as you can see, this is kind of getting pretty high here, but that's okay, it's going to cook down. Let me just clean off my hands here. Ooh. Oh my gosh, that onion is strong. <laughs> All right, now we're going to make our dressing. Before we, yeah, let me just do the dressing first so I don't handle my chicken until the very end. Sometimes it's nice to save that to the end so nothing else can be cross-contaminated with the juices from the chicken. So, I'm going to use three cloves of garlic. And as you can see, I love to smash my garlic. Let me move this out of the way so that you can see a little bit better. So I am just smashing the garlic here. And when you smash the garlic, the paper just comes right off of your garlic cloves. All right, and it also starts it the, the chopping process, right? Because you're crushing it. So I'm just going to give this, I'm gonna give this a, a fairly good chop because I want this, this is going to be in the dressing, in the glaze. Sometimes I don't care because it's, I'm just laying it in with the veggies. But I'm gonna give this a little bit of a better chop and you can go through and kind of smash it a little bit as you're chopping it, release some of those juices. All right. A little bit more. So 
not a paste, but enough to get it evenly distributed through the dressing. I'll show you here. So here's what we have, all right? And what I like to do is I like to mix this up in a jar because I can shake it up to mix it. You can use a whisk and a bowl if you want. And that's what we've got here. All right. So I have my garlic added. Let me grab my list of ingredients here. So remember I said it was a mustard chicken. So I am going to add in a quarter cup of mustard. A I'm going to use a brown mustard, stone ground. I like this for this dish. It adds a little bit of coloring to the final glaze as well. So I have a quarter cup that I'm adding in. All right. Let's get all that out. All right. And I'm going to add to that one tablespoon of honey. I have some organic unfiltered honey here that I like to use. Boop. All right, and that is going in. There we go. Cap that up again. And now I want to add in some of my spices. So what am I using for this? I am going to use some basil, tarragon, and thyme. And I'm going to put in equal amounts. In this case, I'm going to just put in a teaspoon of each. So this is my thyme. I'm putting in my thyme. There you go. <laughs> you heard it here first, right? I'm putting in the tarragon, tarragon, tarragon. I love tarragon with chicken. It has a very distinctive flavor. You may have tasted it sometime before in maybe chicken salad. And a teaspoonful of my basil. There you go. And I'm going to add some more liquids. I'm going to add in a teaspoon, I'm sorry, a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. Give it a little zing. And to that, one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. So one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar, one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar. All right. And then, just to add some more liquid to it, I'm going to add in about a half a cup of broth. And this I have some organic stock chicken broth. It's also free range. A lot of goodness in there. All right. And last but not least, I'm going to add in about a half teaspoon of salt and about a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. All right, I'm going to snap on my lid. In this case, I'm going to screw it on. Let's make sure we get it on there. There we go. Don't want that spraying all over the kitchen. And I'm just going to give it a really good shake. All right. So, now, before I forget, no, let's put the chicken on first. So, let, let me move this to the side so you can see what I'm doing. There we go, how's that? All right, so what I have here are four chicken thighs that I cleaned. What I like to do is kind of fold them in half and place them right on top. There we go. These are a little bit small. This is an organic chicken. 
um, organic chickens tend to run a little bit smaller and less fatty. But I did notice a little bit of fat on this one. And what I like to do, if I have a little bit of fat, I'll just trim it. I trimmed the other pieces before, but I left this one just to show you how I like to do that. And there's not much on here, really. There wasn't much at all. And because it is an organic chicken, uh, I'm not as fussy about the fat that's, that's on there. All right, so now you can see I have my chicken. I'm going to pour about a tablespoon of and I could have done this before I added the chicken, probably should have. In the past, that's what I've done. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of olive oil to that. I could have added it to my dressing as well. But now I'm just going to pour the dressing liberally over my dish. Oh, that looks great. All right, oh boy, <laughs> I'm hungry. There you have it. So here we have our finished dish. What I'm going to do is just lightly cover it with foil. Let me go grab my foil. So I'm going to lightly cover it like so. And I'm going to put it in my 400 degree oven for 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, I'm going to remove the top and bake it for 20 minutes more, or until the internal temperature of the chicken is about 165 degrees. If you have a thermometer, that's a great way to figure it out. Because sometimes if you have smaller pieces of meat, like this one's smaller, you may want to take it out a little bit earlier. But at that point, you will have a wonderful dish. And let me go grab the dish that's made. Uh, la, 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 la. Okay. So we're gonna grab this one out. And there we go, yum. Let me grab a serving spoon. Let's see what might work really well. Okay. And let me grab a plate. And we can just dish this out for you to see. Sorry about that noise. All right. Now, I made this dish with thicker slices of butternut squash. All right. Okay, yum. Clean up my plate here a little bit. And here you have it. It's beautiful. You have beautiful colors. The chicken is nice and tender. Got a fork here. See, I still don't know where things are. Goodness. All right. Let me just slice a little bit here. Nice and tender. Grab a little bit of the ribbons of cabbage. Oh well, <laughs> not very, not very delicate. Let's do it this way. So we have our ribbons of cabbage that you can see here. And a little bit of our butternut squash and some of our, our onion. Mm. Mm. Delicious. 
Absolutely delicious. So I hope you get to try it. Let me know if you do. If you're looking for more recipes like this, head on over to my YouTube channel at Evie Schwag and check out all the recipes, all the cooking classes that I've done. And I will include the link for the printed recipe in the comments section of this video. Enjoy, until next week. See you then, stay healthy, stay well. Bye-bye now.